Hi, my name is Conrad Pussier. I'm a senior reporter at The Real Deal, and I'm here with Matthew Haynes, the founder and head of Property Shark. Um, and we'll talk a bit about the company and the real estate data industry more broadly. Thanks for joining us, Matthew. Um, why don't we start with the very beginning? Sure. Tell me the story of how Property Shark came into being. I was working for Deloitte in the World Financial Center. This was just before 9-11. After 9-11, I was laid off. So I had just gotten into contract to buy a five-family townhouse in Harlem. Uh, I was in contract, but I didn't have the mortgage closed. So I didn't say anything to the bank about having lost my job. And I went ahead and, went ahead and closed. I spent the next two years renovating the apartments. And when I was done, I had them rented out and I had this income. I had a a studio apartment for myself, and I had about two, three thousand dollars a month in free cash flow. And I figured I could live for the rest of my life just like that. But I wanted to get another property to invest in, and I also wanted a raise. You know, at the time, uh, rents were pretty low in Harlem because Harlem was pretty scary looking. I started pulling together the different public record sources, uh, and I put them in one place in a website so that you could just type in an address, and get all the records from Department of Finance, Department of Buildings, uh, the HPD, and ACRIS. When you typed in an address, Property Shark went out and accessed each of those websites mm -hmm. and scraped the data off their websites, aggregated it together, and displayed it to you. But it and so, so the idea was you wanted to give people the, the data to be able to make informed decisions about where to move or where to buy. The what to buy. Yeah. What to buy. Because uh, every property in Harlem had a lot of problems and most buyers knew that there were going to be problems and they were willing to deal with some problems if they knew what they were. Mm -hmm. But that was the problem was that the real estate brokers wouldn't tell you what the problems were. And on Property Shock you could see which building violations, which yes. whatever issues were with the building, it's all right there. That's right. You could see for example if it's, a, if it's an SRO, which is a particularly common problem in Harlem. I guess Property Shark sort of depends on data being available via the internet, right? Data that Property Shark can scrape. Um, back in the day, there was a lot fewer data in public sources available online than there is now. Has that made your job easier? At the very beginning, we relied on screen scraping. Uh, now we get the data in bulk from the, all the, the various government agencies, and there, there we have hundreds, or actually thousands, of sources of data. Okay. Um, but we get it in bulk. We don't do, uh, we do some screen scraping, but not much. So you don't actually go on Acris and look things up. You basically get it delivered into your house from the Department of Finance. That's right. We have a feed, a nightly feed. How did you get your funding to launch Property Shark? Did you have to like run around and get people to give you money, or was it just self-funded at the beginning? There was no funding. Uh, I didn't invest any money in it, and nobody else invested any money. Mm -hmm. I invested my time. Uh, and I, I grew Property Shark entirely out of revenue. So you're based in Romania? Yes. How, how did that happen? In the early days, of, of course, it was based in Harlem. Uh, and at a certain point, I wanted to start hiring programmers. Now, I was competing with Goldman Sachs for the best programmers in New York. At the time, nobody wanted to work for a small real estate startup company. Those were, that was a combination of two bad things, real estate and startup. The good programmers wanted to work for Goldman Sachs, so uh, I started working with people over the internet from around the world. And I had a lot of good experiences with one particular programmer, his name was Alexandru. And one day I asked him, where are you from? And he said, Romania. I said, well, where in Romania? He says, Cluj. I said, is there a, a university there with a, a computer science department? And he said, well, actually, I'm a student at the technical university. Seventy-five days later, we had the first day of business in Cluj with eight uh, programmers hired. Uh -huh. And so you had no previous connection to Romania. It was really just that one person that, it, that triggered it the whole that thing. one person, Alexandru Palade. The advantage of being in Romania is that you have access to this great affordable talent pool. Is there a disadvantage? You know, is it, is it sometimes a disadvantage that you're so far removed from a lot of your clients in New York City? Well, certainly, certainly. And uh, what I've realized in the last uh, six months is that I need to move back to New York. Mm -hmm. And I will be doing that. So the plan is not to move the entire company back to New York, but just yourself for now? Oh, no. I don't think there will ever be a plan to move all of the 
Romanian workers here. I mean, first of all, there would be visa issues, but uh, we have 150 people mm -hmm. in the Cluj office working full time on Property Shark. So, Yadi, a pretty big data company, acquired Property Shark a couple of years ago. W what changed for you with that acquisition? Do you still work as you did before, or is it is it like fundamentally different now being owned by such a big company? Well, there are there are definitely differences. Um, I'll tell you the biggest difference is that I am no longer completely stressed out about making payroll. When you're a small business owner, uh, bankruptcy is just around the corner at any minute. I mean, you could have a competitor come in and just completely take away your market. I remember I went to a party and this guy named, I think his name is Spencer Raskoff, was there. And he told me that he was thinking of teaming up with Rich Barton to form a, a company and that they were fascinated by Property Shark. They were looking at Property Shark every day. And I just had this sinking feeling that they were just going to come in with millions and millions of dollars and put us out of business. And Spencer Raskoff ended up becoming the CEO of Zillow, right? Yes, it was Zillow he was talking about. And I guess they looked at Property Shark a lot. But thankfully, they didn't duplicate it. They did something different. It seems like there's a lot more there are a lot more commercial real estate data companies these days. Reonomy was launched a few years ago. They do something pretty similar to what Property Shark does. BTS, um, a sort of an online portfolio management company, also announced that they're getting into the data business now in, in some way or another. Do you find it's, it's getting a tougher business for you guys? Is there just more competition now than there was? Well, it goes both ways. And I think this is a general business principle. If you're the only player uh, you have a hard time going out and convincing people that they need your product. If there are a couple of players all out in the marketplace explaining to customers that they need something from your category of products, mm -hmm. uh, then you have other people helping you to legitimize the need for what you sell. Right. So there is that. Um, but uh, certainly there are some very competent competitors and, and you know, that's the American way. Mm -hmm. uh, and they're pushing us, and I think we're pushing them to do better. So speaking of pushing, are you, are you working on any new ventures, or what's next for, for Property Shark as you guys sort of try to differentiate yourselves from your competitors? Well, that's a good question. <laughs> um, I'm fundamentally trying to reposition Property Shark. Uh, up until now, Property Shark has been the, the website you go to when you want a dump of all available public record information. And it's just this fire hose. It's like drinking from the fire hose. Mm -hmm. uh, but Property Shark hasn't analyzed the data for you. It hasn't uh, pulled out the right insights. It hasn't told you this is important, this is not important. We are changing that. So for just as one example, uh, we'll give you a dump of all the title documents and the building permits and the HPD registrations. From that, you can figure out who's the owner of the building. Even if it's owned by an LLC, you can often, you can usually figure out who's controlling that LLC. Right. Uh, Just based of who signs documents, who filings, signs the documents, yeah. who signs the permits, who's registered as the owner with the HPD, things like that. You can do that, and that takes a little bit of work from you. But uh, our users are saying that they don't want to do the work. So fine, we've done the work. We've researched every single LLC-owned property in New York City, and we found the people behind most of them. The next step is our users want the phone number. So we're going out and getting the phone numbers. And the next step is to verify those phone numbers. So we have a team in Cluj which is making between eight and 10,000 phone calls every day of the week. Eight to 10,000? Yes. How many people are we talking? Um, one of our people makes about 300 phone calls a day. They're short phone calls. Mm -hmm. So uh, the team fluctuates between 25 and 30. It's, it's students, it's temporary work. Yeah. High turnover. Right. So, so basically you have people in Romania calling Harry Macklow and Douglas Durst and just being like, hey, Douglas Durst, this is XYZ from Property Shark. Is this the correct phone number for you? And then they'll say yes or no or leave me alone. And then you, you go with that. Something like that. It's interesting. And in terms of analyzing the actual data, um, how much scope for, for innovation is, in, is there on that end? I mean, is it, are you moving towards a model where at some point you can, you know, compare the financial performance of one building to the next, to sort of give investment advice to people, or is that sort of too far? Well, I'm certainly not going to give investment advice to people, and I'll, I'll say if I, if I knew where the market was going or I, if I knew what were the right investments, 
I would be so busy acting on that information that I, I wouldn't give it to you right. or anybody else. But we definitely want to be looking at, uh, at owners, at portfolios, and at companies, and being able to talk about how much debt do they have or how much cash have they been able to refinance out of their buildings. If we look into the future, you know, 10, 20 years from now, how many commercial real estate data companies will be in this space? Is, is there room for multiple? Is there room for a reonomy next to a property shark? Or are we inevitably going towards a future where there's just one big data company? Well, I certainly hope there's no room for reonomy. I'm definitely looking to take back the New York City marketplace. But uh, I, yeah, I think uh, competition will, in, uh, will continue to increase and there will be a lot of interesting new companies. You don't think that there's like an, an inevitable trend towards consolidation in the industry, that you know, there's, there are forces pushing the industry towards one big player? No. Um, uh, you know, you asked earlier about uh, what it was like to join Yardi. Uh, one of the things that, another thing that you get when you join a big company is you get advice and mentorship from a lot of other people uh, who are more experienced than you. Uh, one of the things that Mr. Yardi has taught me is that there's usually room in any industry for two or three players. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not natural for there to be just one player. And I think he's right. And I think he's right for the data business. So I think there will be two or three data big players in the data industry, and then there will be a, a, a large number of small bit players. And I certainly intend for Property Shark to be the biggest player. Well, thanks so much for coming in. Well, thank you for having me. It's been a, a pleasure.